Okay, sorry for the short delay there, chat, but uh, we are in the game and ready to go. We're just waiting for the teams to get themselves sorted out and ready. We're ready. They're ready. We're going to kick things off here on Mirage. And of course, TSM going to start things out here on the T side and looking to take a really fast exit towards A. Yeah, Eyeball is making moves as well in towards middle, not sitting by idly here on the CT side pistol. Heap is the one who's going to be tested over towards A and forced backwards initially. Util continues to roll in here. They're taking good control. Everything going according to plan right now for TSM. Bomb plant going to follow suit. And now it's eyeballers who have to make the next move. Well, there you go. First move made. And it's going to be quickly followed up by yet another one. TSM might have to just back away a little bit as their players fall to the wayside. Bomb planted will at least give them a bit of cash. But it doesn't look like they're going to be able to hold on this round they are whittling uh, away a lot of time though what is happening okay there you go that that got a little bit spicy jw with the knife out already in the first round first round of the series and he's already looking for a knife kill he is a different breed as mr jw always entertainment going when he's alive that's for sure been one of my favorite players to watch for the longest of times started watching csgo 2014 he was the man he was him jw with the orb my god, that presence on the server was like nothing else, and uh, yeah, always, always entertainment. So, a bit of a privilege for me to get to cast the JW game, that's for sure. J1, the child. It's always nice Big round, you, uh, have those moments. Yeah, for sure, right? Oh man, oh. that's a moment for Modo. What? Three kills off the bat, and then a response from Heap is a double. Well, that's that's quite, a, quite an interesting push from Eyeball, is they're trying to take a little bit of sightline over towards window, but the smoke didn't come through there. Instead, TSM decide to ego it, and Moto just goes absolutely massive. The trade back is good, but is it going to be good enough, right? There's a lot that needs to be done here in this two versus three. Bomb is ticking away. Do have a kit on hand, but TSM playing this so well, hiding out. Lurk coming in round back, does get taken care of, but Flusher dangerously low now. One stray bullet could be the end of it. Tell me palace player tell me they know the one two three swing only one player he's the one with the kid i mean that's magical but does he have the time oh it's gonna be so close down to the absolute wire split seconds away oh my god i can't believe flush actually makes that work he picks up the kids in transition he doesn't have to change his course after he drops off the stairs if that kit was you know a meter to his left or right there isn't enough time for him to pick it up and get on the diffuse so everything just falls into place accordingly and that's a bit of a disaster i mean motto is now wondering oh not yet production motto is now wondering uh how have we lost that round when i got three opening kills the way that i did yeah honestly uh a little bit of a surprise i think for him after the over aggression not even over aggression man it was it was purely just like bait play Eyeballers just peek out and get mowed down and thankfully there's a good position to be able to, you know, trade that back. And the fact that two players are then able to re-grasp that control and bring the round back into their favor, it felt like TSM had a really good hold on the site as well. You yeah. had three different players, they set up such a good triangle, but I think again it's just kind of over-eager peeking and uh, not playing that time efficiently. And uh, eyeball is, I mean, that, that experience coming through, right? Not just individual experience, but experience as a team. Yeah, it's going to kick them. Oh, they're going to be kicking themselves a little bit, I reckon, with the way that they go on to lose that round. Uh, not not normal. You get three opening kills and you, you, you fumble the round at the end of the day. But uh, CT's made it work. Great recovery from them. 2-0, the bomb on came through, though. So at least they will be able to afford another buy here. Just uh, had a disconnect. I think it was from one of the TSM players, if I'm not mistaken. So hopefully they'll get him back in the server. And there we go. It looks like... Everything's been remedied, and back into the game we'll go. All right, TSM, gonna need to bounce back from that one. Mentally, I think, more than anything else. We'll see if they are able to do it. They do keep that round relatively expensive for eyeballers, though, so the reinvest is not great. JW has bought into the AWP, though. I need to be very weary of how that's gonna work out. He's posted it up in towards mid, but this time around, TSM. Team solo mid, team no one mid. No? Damn. 
I thought, uh, I thought that was quite oh, good. My mic was muted. I sneezed and my mic... Oh, I'm sorry. I left <laughs> you. I'm like you laughing so and I'm responding. I'm like I know, but my mic... So I'm sorry, awkward. Sam. I know. That's my bad, guys. I, I, I shouldered that one. That was a goodie. Uh, I was going to say... I was saying in the previous round, Motto was mid and he did the damage. This round, yeah, as you say, nobody. But I'm going to see if that's a problem or not. Sapping in the corner. He's going to find himself just the one. Should be enough, though. Kills continue to come through. Two versus three, B bomb site compromised, retake underway. They've got a kit, they've got utility. But it's not going to be the easiest, Jamie. I mean, TSM have some decent post plant positions, so there's no immediate way into the site here for eyeballers. Yeah, five person stack in towards that B site, rushing straight out and with uh, a, a little bit of kickback, but not nearly enough. Oh, I was about to say 3v2 retake, but Joel, you pointed him out at the start of the series and. Yeah, immediately brings things back down to a much more manageable position. Crossfire is fantastic. JW, last one left alive. Surely he just backs out. You don't want to lose this AWP. Well, you know what? He'll take one with him, because why the hell not? Yeah, I mean, at least a little bit of extra damage inflicted. As for TSM, they're on the board. Good exec into the B bomb side. I mean, it wasn't looking good in the 4 versus 2, but they're still actually able to make it work seemingly with ease there between... Uh... The two players left alive. Really well nav navigated, Modo and Joel. Good job between them. I mean, they're the only ones with kills so far, Sam. Siphon enters and Valde yet to get off the mark. So this is the Joel and Modo show, as far as I can tell. I, I hadn't even noticed that. That's yeah. rough. That is very rough. You hate to see that. But, I mean, TSM, despite that, still do get one on the board here. Unfortunately, that last round was ridiculously expensive for them. So going to be a very rough reinvest. Yeah, now they seem really flush at the moment with cash. Oh, aggression from yes. Sapek instantly deleted. Now they have overrun all the way up into Aptia. Going to drop down onto the site completely. Not uncontested. Good God. The Deagle sings, but it's only going to be good for one. Joel able to trade it out really easily. Now the re-aggress from Eyeballers. I mean, this is damn near impossible. They had almost nothing into this. And, well, now almost everyone has a kill for Team Solo mid, except Bobby. Yeah, he'll, he'll, it's okay. He's the IGL, you know, he's setting his team up. He wants to boost their confidence as well. I do like the call in that round as well to just play Faustin towards the B bomb site. Works out nicely. You could see Sapik was caught off guard in no man's land. That was really awkward for him. Um, and then there was the flash thrown from Broken Walls. So the TSM knew there was a play in the back of the site. And then they weren't even thinking about the bomb plant. They were just making sure that they were covering each other, assisting each other in the fights. And yeah, got across the line with ease there, I would say. It's been a close couple rounds so far, but that one was the most clear cut we've had. Scoreline leveled up, anti-eco for the T side, and a prime opportunity for them to get the lead. Oh my god, that flash, and yet despite it, the aggression comes through, but TSM bounced back in a very strong way. Anti-eco, like you said, we weren't going to expect too much from eyeballers out of that one. They do take one down with them, so they'll at least be happy with that, but three rounds in a row here, TSM starting to make some bank. Definitely not going to be feeling that economic crunch. That's for sure. Residual cash being built up nicely. That's always lovely to have on your side when you're the IGL. Because you know you've got a bit more freedom to call with. You've got a full buy to fall back on. So you can get a bit cute with it. You can try something quirky. Something uh, out of the pocket. Either way, it's going to be numbers in towards mid for TSM. Again, just barreling in. Looking to assert their dominance. And they have forced eyeballers back. So it's quite a lot of control they've been able to gain early on here. With actually very limited utility usage, Sam. They've only used... Two now, three pieces of util on the round so far. Yeah, for eyeballers, I mean, they got to keep on to every last little bit that they have. Have to be so careful about where they place it. If TSM, I mean, they got so much of it, they could just they can afford to fake. And that's uh, in yeah. this economy, that's that's pretty pretty impressive. But look at I'm this jealous. lurk! How the hell has Pepsor gone and done that? How are they just Straight so? Ramp. Like, yeah, but how are they just so unaware? They're not even watching. There's, there's no one who's posted oh, up for this. No one's even dun -dun. aware. No one's even dun -dun. watching. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Oh, there we go. I mean, unfortunate that he's only going to get the one kill, but it's also a lot of information he's gleaned in the process. It's going to force TSM's hand here. They're going to have to push through apartments. It's actually Flusher who's watching at range. Not ideal with the MP9. Has got Sapic on the cross, though. So they shouldn't have too much trouble closing this one out. I mean, it's really... 
uh, predictable what's going to happen, obviously, with the info eyeballers have got. So they should be well aware what's about to come their way. It's why they've got the third player in position. Valde will drop down, though. That's going to catch Flush off guard. Yeah, you don't want the bomb just yet, mate. Still two players to deal with on the bomb site itself. Well, unfortunately, they're not going to have too much to deal with those players. Now, Inter's... Oh, man. Deep Spidey Sense is tingling. He loses the 1v1, though. And now it's all down to JW. We spoke about him, right? Seasoned veteran of Counter-Strike. Can he be the wonder boy that we need him to be here? I say we. It's all eyeballers. TSM now going to go for the plant. Should have just enough time. Head down low, trying not to get caught. JW, oh, loses that battle. Enters with a massive 1v2 clutch to win out the round for TSM. So calm was Mr. Inters. I mean, what, two rounds ago, he didn't have any kills. Now he's got six frags. Great kills coming through from him. I love the way he plays that clutch. You could see he had a perfect grasp on the situation in terms of how much time he had and what he could do with his time. Because he took his, you know, a few seconds initially and he realized, listen, nine seconds left, got to get a move on, grabs the bomb, plants behind the box, perfectly positioned, and then just plays the 1v1 to perfection. It's only his head exposed while you can see JW's whole body. Uh, and that's going to be a great way for them to open up the following round. So TSM, they're in the groove right now, man. A bit of a slow start to the map for sure. But they have picked things up quite nicely and they're not going to allow what happened that uh, previous round with that crazy lurk to happen a second time. Now they've got people posted up at every extremity. And look at the way Joel is watching, right? They know that they don't have apps control. So he's going to keep an eye out for as long as it takes. And hopefully he doesn't get caught out in mid here. Valdi, however, going to keep his teammates back. And there you go. Easy round for TSM. They don't even have to execute. They just hang out. That's the thing with the TSM, though. I mean, look at the names. There's so much name value across the server on this team. It's just for some reason they haven't been able to make it work. And when it does work, it looks really good. Looking really, really good. I mean, Inters was the one that I was really surprised they let go of. And I mean, you know, on his Twitter and TSM's Twitter was official that he had been benched and pursuing other opportunities. And he was the one I was like, you guys, you, you shouldn't be letting go of Inters and Valde. Those were two I was the highest on. And, you know, Siphon is a great addition. I love the Joel addition and quotes as well. But um, I, it's just a lot of question marks right now, Sam. Not so much in the server, though, because they're looking good. I'm going to be happy with how this is kicked off. Oh, jeez, man. Joel. Joel is 11-4 and four at the moment. I mean, he's just been an absolute monster. Zyphon spots out the elbow. Great flash from Eyeballers. That's going to net them two kills here. Now, they are going to fall off a little bit, give up a little bit of space. It's a bit of an ebb and a flow, a give and a take. And for now, TSM will take control of the site. But Eyeballers, it's a good call from them. Regroup, push back. They do have flank watch, but no flanks to be spoken of, so... Need to be aware that they have to play together as much as possible. For now, just holding these long angles. Bomb has been planted. Thank you, announcer. Disembodied voice in the <laughs> sky. Yeah, just in case anybody missed that right now, it's going to be a two versus four, though. Modo and Inters. Modo, the common denominator from 2v4 that they won a couple rounds ago. Inters good for one. Leaves Modo in a 1v3. JW holds down the line. And although Eyeballers lost the first pick in the round, they actually still maintained really good control. The response was solid off the bat, able to get two quick kills, and then they knew how to navigate the situation from there. The push and pull, giving up the plant, but still you know, making sure they had a grasp on the site. Never really allowing TSM to get into comfortable positions. You know, Inter still on the stairs when the bomb goes down, so it was a good retake. And Eyeballers win a vital round back there to stem the flow. Start building up a little bit of an econ buffer for themselves. Not quite there yet. Every last cent that they have is going into this reinvest. And I like the way that they ran that retake. I think that it worked out quite nicely for them. Those opening kills as well, obviously, quite pivotal. And, uh, maintaining their own momentum. So now TSM, they've uh, had some decent success over towards A. Let's see if they can replicate that this time around. A lot of great early util coming out from Eyeball. Oh my god, beautifully timed as the smoke dissipates from the HE. JW, give him a moment. He's going to take full advantage of that. Now Execute's going to start happening in towards this A site, but Eyeballers, all of them so very, very close. It's going to be a very easy rotation for them. Yeah, 
TSM still should be able to force their way into the bomb site here. I don't know how much eyeballers want to contest while the utility is still in play. They've lost their CT player as well. Oh, JW has a bit of a gap though. I guess there was a gap created by the nade. Who knows? But kills continue to roll through two versus two. The name of the game snaking their way amongst the smoke grenades right now. Siphon's been able to get himself and connect. You can see Sapix smells the rat right now. He realizes that something's amiss. Oh my god, they trade Dinks. AK trumps the M4. Flasher left in the 1v2. He's got a kit, so got time on his side. But that smoke's going to be difficult to try and get through or get past. If anybody can find a way, it's Flusher. But time on his side, that's so relevant, right? Bomb's still not planted. He just plays safe. Oh my god. No! No! <laughs> Oh, oh, timing, timing Great so Great awareness important. from Siphon. I mean, how good is his awareness to actually just look back behind him? Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. I don't, I don't think I check that if I'm in that position. I'm not doing that. There's no, no chance. chance. Um, yeah. But well done to him. Unfortunately, you know what? There was a similar moment of realization. You turn in the smoke to spot out Siphon, but it's just not nearly quick enough. Great round from TSM again. I think the problem here is eyeballers seem to give up the site so easily, or, or maybe not easily, but very quickly. There's very little pushback. Once TSM have set in, they're very difficult to displace from their position. So I want to see a little bit more proactivity from eyeballers. Yeah, unfortunately, they didn't have much money coming into this round here. They started off strong here. Then they lost a round, TSM went on a streak of five, eyeballers won one back, and then TSM straight back to winning ways. Look at what that's done to the money on the CT side. Pots and pans piece together here, lose this, then eco in the next. And at that point, TSM have run away with the half, 7-3 seven, seven, becomes 8-3, so... It's actually really important they make a stand here in this round two eyeballers. There's a lot hinging on this investment. A lot of util used over towards A here. They're really trying to sell this, and Eyeball is not falling for it. Their spidey senses are definitely tingling. Leaving one posted up in Palace, waiting to see if anything happens, potentially to go on a lurk of his own. But Eyeball is have reinforced this B site. They're aware. Now TSM again, very slow play style this time around. I love how dynamic they are. Looking to see if they can get an opener here. They don't want to be too aggressive give over too much and bomb has time to rotate i think that they've clocked that there's been a bit of a movement from eyeballers and eyeballers themselves have read into this as well the senses the game sense on these players is absolutely phenomenal but bomb is gonna get tapped bodies flying all around him waits far too long the palace player activates and bomb still not planted oh. okay into sure i guess but time is just I... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot happened there. Uh, unfortunately for Joel, the best option was to just stick the plant off the get-go. You can't fake him, or you can't fault him for faking it. You know, if there was someone ramp, he fakes it, steps out, gets that kill, we're singing his praises. Unfortunately, the player was in Palace, and so he came out a bit later on. I mean, it felt like it was the last bullet in the magazine that got the kill on the planter, so really tough for TSM, but such an important round from Eyeballers, and a good adjustment from them, because it was a good mid-round decision from TSM to pivot A, but Eyeballers were actually uh, able to stay on top of the transition and the move as well. Okay, so game on, 6-4. Nobody has any cash in the bank, but Heap, he's balling in this round. <laughs> I'm still kind of amazed at how the, the decision-making for TSM and Eyeballers in that last round seemed to be happening concurrently. Um, just at the exact same time, deciding to, to pivot. Well done to Eyeballers to keep things a little bit stressful. Now things are very stressful. He I wasn't sure that was going to get him, but it does. It it a little bit slow on the draw with the, the smoke, unfortunately. And a little bit slow on that smoke as well, unfortunately. Not able to connect the shot, but is able to recover the AWP. And I think that's... uh going to be happy with that one. Last two players for TSM. And I don't think there's too much more expected to be done in this round. Maybe a little bit of economic damage. Surely they don't push for this. How did you miss that? No, JW. Oh, that, that seemed like such a cut and dry shot. Oh, and that was from Volde. A lovely headshot coming through from him. He doubles down. He's just evading everybody right now. And 2v2. Way more doable for TSM. 
the two remaining players for Eyeball is on opposite sides of the map as well, and they both only have MP9s. Oh, and Valde's got a really good read on the situation, just flanking his way in towards his B-bomb site. Flusher has his back turned, and Inters is baiting. He's firing off from us shots intentionally to keep Flusher interested, and there we go. Perfectly according to plan. That's a bold plant there, but uh, it's okay. TSM, what a recovery. Now they've got the favorable 2v1. JW missing that shot is redonkulous, and then he pays for it with his life, and the fact that he's then not traded out as well, Valdi being able to get two there. Oh, no, mate, why? There you go. Revenge for Pepsor. Oh, he doesn't have a kit, though. Inters is tucked in behind the pillar, playing this perfectly, not giving anything away. Wait, there's a uh, smoke on the bomb. This is going to have to be the full 10 second defuse. Inters oh has no God. idea. Oh Get your knife out, blood. Get your knife out. No Stop ways. spamming. Knife out, but it's not going to be in no time. Ways. 10 second defuse, stuck in the smoke. Pepsor has just robbed TSM blind. I mean, what was that plant position, in all honesty? Nobody ever plants there. Uh, and Valde... He got lazy. He was watching the angle, perfectly posted in market. No need to check apartments at all. Nothing. He wasn't exposed to apartments. No reason. And it's a disaster. Two back-to-back -back rounds of you shouldn't have won that. <laughs> and yet. And the, the smoke spam. Do you know what? If I'm, if I'm the diffuser in that situation, I am panicking. And the fact that he... He just does not get hot hit, does not take damage, survives, manages to stick to fuse without kit for so long he lives. TSM gonna be kicking themselves for that one. There have been a couple of rounds yeah. where small mistakes have left TSM lacking. I think he just needed to pull the knife out there, not mess around, knife yeah. out, swipe in the smoke. You know, I mean, maybe he thought he had a kit and that was the concern, but I think after he misses all the shots with Fomas, the Deeg was a real stretch. Anyway, that's in the past. Last round of the first half. And Eyeball is looking to level up the scoreline, which wasn't looking like it would have been a possibility at one point going into the second half. Money is such an issue for both of the teams, so the buys are not where you would want them to be. Eyeball is going to try to make this work. It's going to be another push out towards B. And this time it doesn't feel like eyeballers have the read they had a few rounds back. They've pulled everybody off of the B site. They've killed the lurk towards A, but now they have to be aware it's not going to be an A hit. They're going to need to readjust. Sapex spots out one. Head connected. The second to follow up. And that's it. I mean, he has single-handedly defended this B bomb site. Now TSM, with only two players left alive, have to readjust. Rotations have been pulled over. Heap's going to be able to catch out Joel, the secondary lurk, and now Moto. I mean, what do you do with an AWP and a dream? Not terribly much. That is 6-6 six, six at the half. We'll be back very shortly for the second half.
Great recovery from Eyeballers towards the end of the first half as they level up the scoreline. It was 6-3 at one point. They win the last three rounds of the half. Not without chaos, Sam. And I mean, where does it go from here? Because I actually have no idea. I think the big concern here is for TSM. I mean, that was their T side. And for teams that have not been together for a terribly long amount of time, T side tends to be a little bit easier to get results on. CT side can be a bit more difficult. So now that they've swapped into their own CT side, it's going to have to be somewhat flawless here. Okay, it's a great way to kick it off, Joel, with a nice trade-off. And Inter is going to follow that up beautifully. We're seeing some aggression out in mid here from TSM. Inter's trying his damnedest to get another one, but JW is going to shut him down. Gets the follow-up as well. Siphon, last person left alive. And, I mean, there's just no way that he can go. No. I mean, he's going to... This is impossible. No kit. One versus three. And eyeballers are everywhere, and they know exactly where he is. So it's a, a hopeless effort, and Flusher will put him down. JW's 14 and 7 right now, top of the server, tie with Joel. Probably the oldest, or at least second oldest after Flusher, and Joel probably the youngest on the server. So pretty cool to see opposite ends of the spectrum going head to head in that regard. I mean, this is the exact thing that I was worried about coming into TSM's uh, CT side, but is a pistol round. So can't infer too much from that just yet. Give it a little bit of time. And with it being an even-out scoreline, TSM do at least have a little bit of wiggle room here. Unfortunately, no money to work with, so <laughs> the classic stack. Pistol stack here over towards the A side, but Bond's making its uh, slow and steady way towards mid. Nothing committed just yet. I do like this from Eyeballers, despite the fact that they know that they have the advantage here. Rather play it a little bit safe. When uh, teams are on a pistol round, they can tend to get a little bit crazy, so... Don't take any unnecessary risks. Try and win this as cleanly as possible. You don't want to have to reinvest. Oh no, the caboose sticking out. Beautiful shot to come through. Nice little HE to do some chip damage there. They know that the majority of the players are going to be over on this side. And yes, it will be. No, not flawless. Ah, oh, Heap at the last second will lose his life. But overall, fairly clean round. Indeed. That's what they would have been looking for. Build up some money going forward. Two rounds that split these two teams now. Eyeballers have won five in a row. So they've got the momentum behind them. Can they keep it up is the question. Into the first gun round we go. If Eyeballers can win this, that's going to put them in a really good position, right? Because we go to their map pick of Overpass after this. And we know how much, uh, well, what high regard we hold them in on Overpass. So looking forward to that one. If they can lead the Series 1-0, they'll feel really good about going into their map pick next. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a, a big one for TSM. I see next map they'll get to start on CT, so we'll see if they can take advantage of that. As much as it can be difficult for a, a newish, newer formed team on a map like Overpass, that's the perfect place to try to take advantage. But we'll see once we get there. For now, trying to do a little bit of stall, a little bit of delay, garner some information where they can. Bomb nowhere near committed, but now it will be retrieved. Start making its way over towards the A site. A little bit of util over towards B as well. Just to keep TSM on their toes. But a nice opening pick here from the eyeball is instantly traded out. However, the two players over towards A activated. And they will start to shut Ooh. it down. Unfortunately, overrun. Beautiful swing there. Bomb should get planted. As TSM still have to wait for a rotation from Inters to come all the way from this B site. Valdi's not waiting. He doesn't care. Bomb not down yet. He thinks he can get something done. Yeah, he's deployed the smoke to try and play around it. He could get really good timing. Oh, they've rounded the corner. Oh, Flusher will get caught juggling some weapons. So at least that's a frag back. Valdi's still not entirely certain where one of the two remaining players are. Actually, I don't think they've got location on either of them. No kitchen for the CT side, but they have dropped the smoke on the bombs. So that's going to be making things a little bit more chaotic. A nade into the smoke, and that's going to clear out the diffuser. Frag will come through from Valde. Drops another smoke onto the bomb, but he doesn't have the kit. He doesn't have health either. And that's a massive round win for Eyeballers. Well done on that one. Beautiful control from start to finish. It was looking a little bit like TSM might have the upper hand, but I think Inters gets a little bit over-eager trying to, you know, push out onto the site and either deny plant or very quickly uh, respond to the planter. But unfortunately, he just can't get enough done. Eyeballers have such a good setup there, creating a nice little triangle for themselves. I love triangles. I talk about triangles all the yeah. time. It's such a good crossfire setup. And, oh, 
Okay. JW loses his life instantly to a deagle at range. TSM have the numbers advantage, but not the weapons advantage. Still Pepsos onto the player back in towards CT. You can relay the information through. There are a lot of players here for the CT side right now. Uh, and Deep is fairly low. He's going to have to be careful. Frag will come through. My goodness. That was a chaotic anti-eco round. A lot of damage for TSM, which they'll certainly welcome. Uh, definitely a lot more expensive than eyeballers would have wanted. But they've now hit double digits. So it's definitely not the biggest concern for them. That being said, this could be their... I don't want to say their last buy, right? But they buy into this, spend everything they, that they have. A little bit of cash left over in the bank for the next round. But not terribly much. TSM now, full gun round. AWP in hand. Everything going for them. And if they win this round... They could very easily see themselves clawing their way back into this. So eyeballers cannot afford to drop the ball here. Yeah, massive round for both of these teams. Economic reset looms for the loser. Mm -hmm. Looks like eyeballers is going to take their time, build themselves into a couple players lowers, one top mid as well. Pretty standard default coming through from them. But it's going to be Valde who opens up. JW kind of feeling it out in the apartments. There was a forward position from Valde as well. Such an important round for TSM. Must win gun round coming through for them right now. I like seeing the proactivity as well. Dealing with the AWP. Getting that offline. Almost unrecoverable as well. And a lot of damage onto Sapek as well. Get themselves a nice little advantage into this one. He... Spots out one, oh. gets the kill despite getting shot himself. No. Oh dear, caught with util in hand out in the open and it's an easy cleanup kill there. Not the recovery that eyeballers would have wanted. And bomb has still not made its way anywhere. The entirety of eyeballers falling to the wayside, bodies flying around, and Flush is still in spawn with the bomb. Yeah, he was hoping that Pepsor was going to be able to work miracles, but unfortunately, there was just no chance. They knew he was in there as well, got things in his first fight. Flusher, 1v3, barely any time to work with. Should be a matter of time. Can he take any to the grave with him is the question. Not even in the clear under palace, so there we go. Free frag for Inters. And that's going to be a TSM winning a vital round back there. I was a bit nervous for them because uh, it was looking a little bit a little bit circumspect. I mean, it was a, a strong position they find themselves in at the start of the round. Um, just a little bit little bit sketchy there towards the middle part, but they, they navigated with aplomb. So we do get across the line. And as mentioned, losing that round puts eyeballers in a very rough spot economically. So timeout will be taken. Had such a good start to this half, but TSM looking a lot better than I think previously anticipated. I will say that it feels like a lot of what they're doing, we were saying this during the, the halftime break as well, it feels like there's a lot of leaning onto the individual prowess of some of these players, right? Joel has been performing incredibly well. Inters is doing really well. Valdi's also up there. Zyphon's having a bit of a slower day, but it happens from time to time. Um, I was actually interviewing Goose Breeder from, I was talking about FlyQuest Red a little bit earlier on, and she was saying like, you know, Teams have their ABC days, and so do players. So today is yeah. unfortunately a C day for Zephyr, but with the way that Joel and Inters in particular are playing, definitely going to pick up that slack a little bit here. And for eyeballers, we need to try to match that. Yeah, I mean, it does feel like they're going to need Zephyr to come online sooner or later. Can't continue, you know not contributing in the fragment department. We all know what a strong player Siphon is as an individual, right? So mm -hmm. it does feel like it's a matter of time. In this round, would be a good round to boost the confidence. I'd say send Siphon in there, man. Just let him go farm some free frags <laughs> against the pistols. <laughs> Valde, that nade, yeah, collided from his teammate. There's Siphon gets an eco kill, so that'll, that'll bode well for him. Valde wants this so badly, but it's just not, it's not feeling very comfortable, is it? I think that, that HE was a little bit stressful. And the fact that then, oh man, Valdi backs off and Inters dies for his sins. <laughs> but Valdi's still up here. Still has a chance. Eyeballers know that the bait and switch has happened. There you go. Valdi spotted out. He's going to be duking it out with this one player. Meanwhile, Bomb's heading over towards mid. Hasn't committed just yet. They know that they're on a pistol. So economic damage really is the name of the game here. 
possibly a plant at the absolute most. But Russia is going to be met with the barrel of an M4. I'm possibly going to follow that up onto heap. Ah, oh, you know what? I was really hoping for the HE kill. But the follow-up from Mono is good too. And Sapek, <laughs> I mean, bomb is lost. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. I think Sapek's going to try and recover this weapon. Nope, not denied. Not happening. See, Valde, patience also gets you eco kills. You don't always have to hunt for them. Sometimes they come to you. Either way, 10 8. Another gun round here for eyeballers. If they lose this one, 10 9 becomes a leveled scoreline because they'll have to eco afterwards. So, I mean, they won seven rounds in a row to get themselves in a comfortable position, but TSM now breathing down their necks once again. Unsurprising. Flusher has got the MAC 10. That affords him full utility. What do eyeballers fall back on? I mean, it hasn't been a great map for eyeballers recently, but Mirage certainly used to be in their wheelhouse in a big way. I'd say like Mirage and Ancient were their two most played maps at one point along with Inferno, so they're certainly familiar with it. Let's see what they're going to conjure up here. Great positioning from Inters there. Doesn't get the player that he actually does spot out initially. Oh my god. Great readjustment there from Sapek. We'll take him down. Zyphon waiting. I, I don't know how he loses that man. Keep yeah. just better. And it's not like Heap gets the instant shot either. Yeah. Like steps out, adjusts, sprays him down. And this is a great position eyeballers find themselves in. Four versus two. There's no way back into this round for TSM. It's just about getting these guns into the next round now. That's the only mission they'll be thinking about. Valde's like, I'm not so sure about that, Hayes. I've got a smoke grenade and a kit, brother. Watch this. Hold my beer. <laughs> there we go. No. Now's about getting out of there. He's kind of regretting it now. Wishing he'd left. Doesn't look like he'll pay for his sins, though. Oh, no. This would be too ironic. If Motto's the one who dies and Valde doesn't, I don't think... That's just not fair. That's not fair, universe. <laughs> oh. Motto did all the right things. He headed for the hills. He found somewhere safe. Valde was the one on the front lines, and he stays alive? I mean... You know, Counter-Strike doesn't care about your fairness. Let's face it. Yeah, that's true. Life's <laughs> not fair, right? Truly. Now, TSM so I'm going to have to take that time out because despite having a, a, you know, a run of good rounds, they've been really close rounds. So again, we find ourselves on, a, on an economic coin flip. Losing this round will likely lose them the map. So every single round here is so important for TSM. They should also be aware that eyeballers do not have the best money in the world. And if they win this yeah. round, not only do they get all of that cash, but they deny any sort of like loss streak because eyeballers have just won a round. So they will decimate that economy. And on then, the flip side, though, TSM lose this round, they've got nothing. Yeah, no, 100%. Like, I mean, this, this round, this is the ultimate swing round for TSM at this point. Does appear to be the case. The ultimate swing round indeed. Swings and roundabouts. Yeah, TSM 12-8 down, no money if they lose it. So everything on the line. And it does get off to an alright start. Joel through the smoke finds an opening kill. That's going to just prompt Heap to get a move on out of Palace once again. They're assuming full control to save bomb site. Not much resistance. And they do come into contact. Then it goes their way. Such a risk push out in towards mid they were looking to stack up and get as much damage as, uh, done as humanly possible but they only managed to get one for themselves now they have to go in for this retake as bomb is going to get planted fairly easily here and eyeballers have so much time to set up this post plant and tsm just gonna have to save they've got no money left pushing this oh would, would, would i mean it's devastating that yeah the, the, the high risk play of pushing out in towards mid and trying to get like two or three kills off the back of that and only being able to get one, but you've left the A site completely unguarded and eyeballers can just overrun it with absolutely no kickback. That's devastating for TSM. Yeah, it really is, right? They were making their moves. They decided to push their chips in towards middle and try and mount the defense there and they got an opening kill. But I love the fact that eyeballers, just without any hesitation, thought, okay, we've lost our one player in middle. We can't, you know, dawdle about now. We gotta get a move on. Heap will die to the explosion, but that's not much of a problem. What a recovery. I mean, what a good round from eyeballers. They go up 12-8. Four map points now. 
to get one up over TSM on TSM's pick. And uh, I mean, TSM were leading 6-3 and mm -hmm. they were dominating those rounds they were winning as well. They then lost the one round where the plant got denied in the last second. There was then another round where the diffuse was stuck in the smoke and they've just looked rattled since then. Uh, genuinely, I think that uh, the potential mental boom that some of these rounds have had, really, I mean, we've seen some very silly mistakes coming through from TSM throughout this map. And, you know, shaking off a little bit of that rust for some of these players. And I mean, the, the youngest gun, Joel, is being an absolute superstar here. So much reliance on him, but it just has not gone their way. Now, despite the fact that money was in such a tight spot for TSM, because they did save those three guns, they're able to kind of spread the wealth around a little bit. And they're still going to be able to buy into not only a pretty damn good buy, but an AWP as well. It was definitely the right call to make. Now on last round, everything to play for. Not going to go for that same mid gamble, but Modo looking to see if anybody is cheeky enough to peek him. Such a good position here. Great util from Pepsol, but not going to get anything off the back of it. Modo gets so aggressive. Aggressive and still oh. lives. Oh, that nature is nasty. Yeah, that was a juicy one, man. L lands on top of Flusher. That's him out the round. If only the player lowers Pep so I'd throw in the H in instead of the mod. He would have exposed Motto. And Siphon comes up good with the kill as well, but Motto will miss a shot. Pep so punishes. So that does get eyeballers back in with the chance. That was a massive gunfight. Sapic needed to go his way, and Joel is the one who will assert his dominance here in the round. Big multi kill coming through from him. Leaves JW without much of a chance. It's, uh, yeah, should be impossible in this 1v4. Bit of money for eyeballers to get, what, $1,400 when they lose this round? If I'm JW, I think I'm just saving the Orpia. Can drop an AK in the next Pepsor, can buy. So you got guns on three out of your five players. I think that's best case scenario at this point. Great adaptation from TSM. They still go for that kind of aggressive push towards mid. Maybe not push, but presence towards mid. Change where the AWP is posted up. Doesn't get all of the value that it would have wanted, but creates enough of a distraction, enough of a di diversion. Gone is some really good early intel. And they're able to play off of that perfectly. JW, you have no right, man. But unfortunately, these last two TSM players are posted up perfectly. Oh, JW, bro! It, I mean, he he expected it, but just he not picking up. He fakes it out. Yeah. Yeah. If can you imagine if he actually hits that shot one health? I would be quaking in my boots at that point. I'd hate to be the player left in the one v one for TSM to try and make sure that you don't lose that round. <laughs> All right. Well, good crack. Good attempt. Twelve nine eyeballers have to make a decision. I think they're just going to level... Oh, I was going to say, I think they level out the economy and they guarantee a buy in the next round. But actually, they're going to go all in and why wouldn't they? I mean, they've got more than enough firepower. The problem in this round is going to be utility. Flusher will certainly settle for the MAC-10. That's his 4A, but they're not going to have as much util as they would normally. TSM doing so much to give themselves that stay of execution. Living to fight another day. The problem here is, I mean, eyeballers have enough of a lead that they're not quite in the danger zone just yet. Now, losing out on this round, they'll have a little bit of a lost streak bonus to work with. But they could still build back into this and close out the round. I feel like overtime is definitely an option here. I mean, if TSM oh, yeah. keep up this form that they've picked up in the last couple of rounds, we could very easily be going into OT. And look at this, look at this push from TSM, looking for that early information out towards the A site. So they know that there's nothing happening here. They know that the presence has to be mid to B. So having all of that vital information Responses should be so easy. Eyeballers have been enjoying this boost up into snipers. It was Peps on the last time. This time it's going to be Sapek who's boosted up in position, but Motto's ready. Oh no. What's the timing like? Disastrous for Motto. Sapek doesn't want to snap up the kill. Eventually he will. There we go. Now he's, one, now he's trying to join up with his teammates, but he can't get the kill on top of Valde. How has Valde found a second? And he's going to try and make his way through the smoke. Now this is criminal from Valde. He's between two players. He's going to get himself a third frag. Eventually JW is going to emerge now, but Valde's still ready for the potential. He's going back hunting for JW. Valde, you madman. 
what a round. Another one from TSM that they do so well in. A another round where a few small mistakes could have cost them so dearly. But the recovery was fantastic. And I think, again, that early information that they're able to get makes such a big difference. They know that they can start to rotate. They know that they have such like a, a solid control of the map or a solid knowledge of where this hit is going to end up being. And they can pivot off of that. Now Eyeball is down onto this eco, but this is where things start to get a little bit dire. Losing this round? Fine, that's expected for Eyeballers. Next round, however, they're going to come in with a really, really solid buy. They're going to do a little bit of economic damage here. Two kills is actually pretty damn phenomenal. Flash just picked Go up on. the AWP. How expensive can you make this, man? Not very. Oh, that would have been amazing. I was, no. I was like, go on, roll back the lad. Roll back the years, lad. Give us some nostalgia, some vintage flush up. You know, picking up the orb in the eco, first frag, pound, pivots back around the smoke. I could see it happening. Either way, 12-11. Last opportunity for eyeballers to finish off the job in regulation. Otherwise, we wipe the slate clean. And we run it back in OT. We saw it yesterday. 12-8 turned into OT. And there's a good chance it's going to happen here again. Can Eyeballers finish it off? They've got one more shot here. Last chance saloon for TSM as well. To keep themselves alive in this. Oh my god! It's the aggressive push into mid, and this time eyeballers are expecting it. Instantly, that first kill comes through. Now, Joel flashed out, has to reposition ever so slightly. Can't take that aggressive position here, but Modo, oh, great trade off there. Taking JW off of the board, and that's a huge boon for them. Now, they're going to start oh. heading over towards this A site, but there's a lurk coming in all the way from apartments. And if they can just wait just long enough, they don't have to wait. Moto's AWP is absolutely singing. The eyeball is falling apart at the seams, and now the Lurk's going to activate. This is dire straits for eyeballers. Yeah, there's no way back into this one. This right, surely. Valde's already in Palace. He's got his victim lined up. There's just no world in which uh, eyeballers are going to be expecting the flank this early on. Oh my, I mean, he's still just jump spotting around as Mr. He. Valde gets that for 3 4 versus 2. That really scuffs things up here for the T side as well because there's so many different angles they have to try and contend with. And there we go. Overtime confirmed. What a fight back from TSM. Down 8 12, but they still kept the belief. And actually, they almost made it look easy. Honestly, Modo does so much in that round. If he doesn't get those two AWP kills, I think that Eyeballers just overrun them. And I mean, that is the power of the AWP. That is what makes it such an incredible weapon, a momentum swinger, and brings things back easily into their control, even after they lost, uh, lost the first player out towards mid. Great adaptations from TSM. I mean, they looked a little bit shaky on the T side, but their CT side looked far cleaner than I'd expected. Pushing eyeballers all the way into this overtime here. I just, I just don't know how to call it at this point. Yeah, it's rough for eyeballers that it slipped to the stage. Things were looking really good for them. But that's now in the past. And TSM going to have some good confidence and momentum behind them now. Modo was a big force in those last few rounds. Joel was great throughout the entirety of regulation. Eyeballers have got to put behind them though what's just happened. They can't dwell on the fact that the game has slipped through their fingers. Straight back into action. And the default is going to be the name of the game. Oh my god. So cheeky. I don't know how he just gets up in there completely uncontested. But there you go. Another couple kills to come through. Well, a second kill to follow up the first. Eyeball is in a bit of a, a state of flux now. Now that there's nothing more out onto the field, they know that... Oh my god. Oh my god. How how has this happened? <laughs> They're just dancing around each other. There you go. This time around, Inters. Again. Great awareness. Flusher? Uh did he just what I don't know how he disappeared there. I was like, he didn't fall off the map. Like this is not no, Vertigo. So like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? Not entirely sure what happened there, but he did just lose his life out. Can you... Either way. 
<laughs> I'm trying to figure that one out. Okay, I didn't yeah. I see if he was actually very low or not, and if he like took a little bit of fall damage, it walked into a molly. Maybe. Yeah. No, because molly, it would have shown the thing. Maybe he did just like fall off of something with like two HP. Yeah, I mean, normally Flasher, you know, the experience, he knows his limitations. Either way, hasn't had a great, great time of it so far today. 11 kills to his name, same as Sapic. And TSM have got the lead. It's been a while since they've had the lead. And that's going to just continue to build their confidence that they've found here on Mirage so far. Their map pick. From here, we go to Overpass. And it, that's why it feels like it's so important for TSM to win here. Because Overpass is going to be a challenge for them. TSM heavy stacking the B site is really interesting. Damn. Yeah. I don't like, think I have I... any info, right? Yeah, it's... I don't know what the what the call was. <laughs> Everybody don't hang out on B, B and hit. don't look for anything. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Probably expecting a massive B exec in all honesty. Well, they might actually end one. up in that direction. Yeah, funnily enough, right? Like, because only one gets killed, they think, okay, well, maybe now we've convinced them that that was our look and we're going B. But TSM not buying into it. They're chilling. They're waiting. Now, nothing spotted out just yet, but footsteps will be heard. Exec Util will come through. Xyphon, great shot from backside. He slowed things down, but his position is now known. He's not checking every angle. Some beautiful Util from Heap, however. Three versus one here. Moto last one left alive. This was a great execute from Eyeball. Is such a good read, despite the fact that the site was so heavily guarded. They're able to flush them out so nicely. And Moto's just going to have to back out with the AWP. Doesn't make sense. Why would you be saving? There's only one round left in OT after this, and you've got more than enough money to buy. That's a cop-out. Just attempt the 1v3, try and make some sort of magic happen. You've got nothing to lose. Lovely restructuring of the round there from Eyeballers, though. Get that kill on Valde. Still commit to the B-bomb site. The exec was solid. I mean, TSM, just too passive for my liking. You can't really have both players playing so passively. You noticed how far forward Eyeballers got onto the bomb site before TSM started commit, uh, contesting. I mean, Siphon sure gets that one kill, but then he has no idea that there's another player right on top of him. And, uh, yeah, just kind of all snowballs out of control. Great D exec from Eyeballers. Double AWP on the T side? Uh, not for Okay, long, it was, it, yeah, it was just for like an early little thing. Nothing got gathered, nothing garnered. Swap over back to the rifle. I, I had questions about that for a moment, but, uh, fair enough. Yeah, that would have been fair. <laughs> that would have been I hilarious. I mean, it could be like a storm-based thing. One peaking top mid, one peaking ramp at the start of the round, maybe. Like, I, I could get behind that. So I don't think you'd hold on to them throughout the round. Yeah, I mean, if you did, that would be very entertaining, but I don't know that that would necessarily be the right call. And now eyeballers have managed to gather themselves quite a bit of space over towards B. Bomb is moving over towards A, though, and this is interesting. They've installed three players over towards B in case of a rotation. But Bomb is heading over towards A, and again, TSM do not bite. It doesn't matter what eyeballers do to try and fake out. They never buy it. Yeah, it's true. Seem to be set in their in their ways and their defenses. Gonna be a splitting towards the A bomb side coming through here. TSM are well poised to deal with it. Three players d dedicated to the say site right now, and then one in towards mid. Nice and passive from Valde, making sure that there aren't any boost shenanigans. There's still a second player in towards ladder room. That's Flush, and he's been found out as well. Valde is just weeding them out, and now they're gonna be forced into this A exec in less than ideal conditions. We're still somehow able to find frags, but I don't think there's a way for them to make this one work. Time too far gone, and there we go. Joel will finish it off. That's him up to 30 kills. Joel has been a freaking demon. I'm very glad that we went with your suggestion for player to watch. <laughs> well, I mean, you know what? Pepsil's not that far behind. It's only 10. Yeah, it's I mean, Pepsil's put up a good game as well, you know, within he himself. Has, yeah. No, 100%. I think... Uh, there's definitely a lot going into this from both sides. Mm -hmm. TSM will win the first half of OT. They're going to be feeling very happy with that. But here's where things get spiced. Because they didn't win enough rounds to get them onto map point. And their T side had holes in it. 
So for eyeballers, if they can abuse that, there's a very good chance they can close it out here in the second half of overtime. But we'll find it's out. It's just all about, yeah, yeah, it's all about which TSM are we going to get, right? Yeah. Because th there was a really good TSM at one point in the first half. And I think uh, may have lost Haze there. So we'll carry on into this one. Sorry about that one, chat. All right. Hey, he's back. I thought that was me. ZA Internet. Like, which one of us is dying? <laughs> Time, which is what matters. Oh, Zyphon. Not going to be ready for Heap on the opposite side. He's the one who clears out the smoke, but Heap is the one who takes advantage. And it's great for eyeballers. This is what I was saying. They need to really capitalize on their CT side here. Already at a two-player advantage. Three player advantage. So much HP in the barrel. Pepsor, what a devastating anchor here over onto the A side. Two kills for him. Make that a third. And he's slowly climbing. It's like he heard us. And he was like, no, 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 no. I'm the player to watch. And uh, yeah, I mean, he'll just hold down that site free and easy. Okay, well, game's still very much alive right now. Eyeballers, it's a good a testament to their mental strength, right? That even though the game slipped away from them in regulation, they've still come back to fight here in OT. And whoever wins this next round is going to guarantee themselves a map point. So, a lot on the line right now. 23 kills for Peps or JW and Heap. Putting in a big shift right now. Siphon wants to get ahead of that molly. He's charging forward. My god, okay. Asserting his dominance. There's no one else on the A bomb sites itself. Siphon's a man on a mission, but they do need to still proceed with caution. And this is just another one where eyeballers have so much control. I love this look that you pointed out, though. Inters is going to get spotted out. He's still good for one, however, but his position is known, and he catches the one pushing in towards him. They have control of bomb now. I mean, they know about Inters. There's very little that the Lurk's going to be able to do, but Joel is still alive. And Joel is going to try to keep this rolling. Spam down through the smoke. And now the Lurk of Inters is the only thing left to keep them going. I don't think there's terribly much that he's going to be able to do here. Smoke out over the top. Pushes in through mid. JW, aggressive hold. And despite the flash, it's an easy kill. Okay, well, Eyeballers had four map points in regulation on their T side. And they couldn't close them out. They have got one shot. One opportunity to seize everything they ever wanted. Oh my god. They capture it or are they just going to let it slip? Mom spaghetti. Something like that. <laughs> somewhere. Listen, yeah. we're both blonde. Great quote. So, you yeah. know, Eminem and I were basically the same. <laughs> he is him. He is him. Truly. Tactical timeout now from TSM. Let's segue away from that as quickly as possible. Because uh, it's eyeballers who found themselves on that series point, or map point, sorry, uh, that I was talking about a little bit earlier on. And this was the big concern for TSM. Losing just one round on their CT side may have cost them the map. However, the timeout comes through. And to be fair, TSM have had some really good timeouts. Every time they take a timeout, we see a really solid resurgence from them. And they're going to need to pull out the exact same thing here. One round is all it takes to take us into a double OT. And Eyeballers looking to close this one out. It is their opponent's map pick, so they will feel very confident going onto their own map if they can securely put this in their pockets. Which way does this one go? One chance on the CT side, and uh, they're not making any super aggressive moves. Oh man, that smoke's gonna fade. Sapic takes contact. Uh, it feels like everybody's quite lucky to still be alive at the end of that one. I don't think anybody's too happy or too unhappy. Pepsol's the one who has a job to do now. Underneath Palace, he should go down. He does. Great kill coming through from Valde. Takes a lot of damage in the process, but brings it back into an even numbers game. The bomb's gonna follow suit, and TSM have got a lot of space to work with right now. There's a huge flank coming through from JW, but he has an AWP, so it's not really an ideal weapon. You can see how long he's taking because he's just not entirely soon. So it's going to take him a while to get in position. Game on. Well, they are aware that he's probably going to be coming up from here. We do have Inters holding for it, waiting for him to show some face. 
And the rest of the team, not even waiting for him to activate, bro. Sapek, easy kill on Demoto, but the Lurk is taken offline, and it's back down to a two versus two. However, one player position known, second player position at the very least suspected. They're going to have to try and one, two, three, swing this. No. Enters gets both? He's still in the molly. He's still standing in the flames right now, but it's just immortal because the map is paused. It's in freeze time. He gets forced out by the incendiary and gets both the kills to force OT. That's insanity. Oh my goodness. Okay, double OT. Here we go. Eyeballers have now had five map points. Five chances on TSM's map to close it out and they haven't been able to. Jeez. And TSM now going to have a little bit of a run on their T side. So going to try and rake in as many of those rounds as they possibly can. I was not expecting that to go to double OT. I, you know, the round starts off and I'm like, mm, okay, eyeballers probably got this in bag. Comes down to 2v2 and I'm like, all right. You know, they got a good idea of where the last two players are, but Inters goes absolutely massive to clutch that one out. JW has been monstrous with this AWP, it must be said. Opening frags have been fantastic, but Moto gonna do just the same and take Heap offline as well. Shot not connecting through the flames there, but a tasty HE to follow through. It just seems like there's a lot of like 1v1 battles happening across the map here. No one really stacking up and taking solid control, but TSM have been forced, kind of corralled into a really rough spot here, and Pepsor is heading out on a lurk. They are keeping an eye out for him, and he could possibly lose his life in this one. If eyeballers get too overly aggressive here, TSM are waiting for it. There they are. Pepsor is found out, like you say. The awareness was on point for TSM. And Pepsil was probably licking his lips right, thinking he's in a great position, but just great awareness from Volde. No need for him to do anything else as well, because he's got the AWP posted in mid. And here we go. Now they make a decision. Where do they go? Looks like they're going to try and get themselves in towards this B-bomb site. Two through apartments, one through middle, minus the middle player. Turns into a one-dimensional hit, and JW is in such a good spot with the AWP. Hits the first, and turns it into a 1v2, and he's not going to hang around for Volde to try and get the trade either. Such dynamic orping and that will keep him alive just a little bit longer. Valdi now spots out one, realizes that it's not the AWP player, so he should know that both players are out towards that direction, but there's no patience. Flusher is a man on a mission, and while JW gets taken out, Valdi none the wiser. And Flusher will be able to clutch it out, and that is a clean diffuse. Really well played from Flusher and JW, it must yeah. be said. I mean, you can see the big cogs working in Flush's brain there. Even though JW died, he knew there was no way Volder's going to think there's a player coming from Broken Wall. So he knew he had that kill dead to right. And Eyeballers may not have been able to win the last round of OT1, but they win the first of OT2 to open up their account. That feels like TSM have just been chasing this map throughout the entirety, right? When are they able to pull ahead and shift gears? Because... I mean, it's all good and well that they constantly deny eyeballers getting across the line, but eventually they have to make a move here, right? Something definitely has to give. What is it with us and crazy OTs, by the way? Day I don't know, two. I guess. It's, well, I mean, we've both been casting for so long, but we've never had the pleasure of casting together. So now it's just like, you are gonna cast together. Mm -hmm. The universe has spoken. Mm -hmm. Sapphire, rise up, gang gang. That's it. We're taking over, guys. <laughs> Well, yeah. A lot of early util used out from eyeballers here. Oh, TSM very much abusing that mid position. Oh, like, mate, I need to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, almost getting stuck there by his own teammate is a bit of a rough one. Ooh. How are you just so aware, Pepsor? Gets the first, can't get the second, but does a ton of damage onto Zyphon. Now Zyphon's position is known. Bomber's making his way over towards this A site, no. but it hasn't been opened up yet. Somehow, JW dodges out the bullets, but again, Bro, his stop. position known. The palace push is so easy, and enters again. Two kills from the same position. He's so easily brought the control back into the hands of his own team. The site is basically opened up here. Oh man, this is so tough. Three versus two, round is flipped on its head. It was looking so good for eyeballers initially. Fake plant to try and draw anybody out. They know they've got the time to work with. Two quick kills, okay. This round just continues to 
swim back, swing back to back like a pendulum, and it's actually going to be Eyeballer's round. Now, I tell you what, JW is breathing a massive sigh of relief. He nearly <laughs> threw that round for his team, you know. The call came through. I think it was Inters or whoever was ramp was really low after the dink. It was Zyphon, Zyphon excuse me. Yeah. It was that dink from Pepsor. So then JW nades him even further, and he's standing on stairs with his USP out, no one covering Palace. He was so lustful for that kill. He wanted that frag so badly, and it nearly cost his team everything. But luckily, somehow, the rest of his team are able to bounce back in a surprising fashion. I think TSM get a little bit too uh, eager on that one and hand over some kills. What is this mid-aggression again? Heap is an absolute monster. Look at all of this early damage that's come through. The kills are coming thick and fast as well. Eyeballers only lose one in that altercation. Pepsol might lose his life here, but he's going to push for this. Why? Oh my god, what is happening? Eyeball is getting way too aggressive here, getting way too eager to close this out. And despite the fact that they are making some very questionable choices, this round is still competitive. It's still winnable for either side. Oh, Flush is going to walk straight into Joel's cross. Hey, look at Joel, look how patient he is. And there we go, patience pays dividends. It's all on JW, one versus two. Top fragging for his team. Oh, and he's in the perfect position. There's the Eagle Art is going to walk into the crosshair, but JW looked a little bit slow there, if I uh, can say so myself. Either way, it is going to be a big round for TSM. They needed at least one there to carry through into their second half of overtime. Swings and roundabouts indeed. Neither one of these teams really being able to stamp a claim here. But again, it's got to be said, right? I was mentioning it a little bit in that previous round. Eyeballers starting to get a little bit unhinged <laughs> we need to see them clean up a bit yeah particularly yeah, on this t side you can you can be a little bit more aggressive i think on the t side you can you can be a little bit more loosey-goosey with it but knowing that we're into this double ot and tsm are so at, like good at adapting to your play need to see them tighten that up and there you go jw beautiful first kill instantly traded out by modo yeah orp is doing work right now Every round, it's just, it's one of them getting the opening kill. True. I didn't check that and stat. Jo the fact that eyeballers have been able to get the frag on Joel is actually really good. Top fragger removed from the equation. 4v4 with plenty of time left on the clock. Now, eyeballers should know TSM have been very active on the CT side, and that's why they're just looking to try and pun punish picks and, or rather peaks and pushes that may come through. Mardo, perfect position. Pepsol was just hoping there was some space created because of all the attention in towards mid, but completely off the mark. And it's essentially a free frag as a result, a really big roll of the dice there from Pepsol. Obviously, hindsight has 20-20 vision, but that was not the play. Sapic, next man up to the plate. And the timing works out for him. That's going to give them a lifeline in the round. Valbear and Modo to try and keep TSM in a good position. And Valbear, yeah, goes completely unaccounted for. Wouldn't you know it, we found ourselves in a two versus two all over again, but now down to only one player for eyeballers. Love this position from Modo. He's he not going to get contested, though. Interesting. I don't think he spots it because Valdi's not looking to him. So this could be game breaking, game changing. He's just no, going to walk good. up. Yeah, Heap's going to plant the bomb. Valde will just walk out and get the kill. That's a really smart position from Valde. Both Valde oh! and Modo and... You were saying? <laughs> okay, wait. There's enough time here. There's just enough time. Oh, we're alive. Okay. And you know what? The fact that Modo has... Okay, he's got his, his pistol out. That makes sense. He knows that Heap has to be low. Oh, surely not. Heap is going to step out. But the pistol will secure the job. Okay, everyone calm down, including me. Yo, no, that was very stressful. Uh, I, the fact that he taps literally could have meant everything, but unfortunately loses out in that last 1v1. So I have a few, I'm a stats nerd, uh, and there's a few things that I feel that I should point out to those at home who might like stats as much as I do. Now, as at the last round, because HLTV takes a little while to uh, to update, JW is 7-4 and four for opening kills. Moto is okay. seven and nine. Damn. But the really interesting one for me, Zyphon, who only has 11 kills, seven of them are opening frags, but he's also seven and nine. 
Okay, so he is doing a lot of heavy lifting in terms of the opening kills. Oh no! I thought Incense was going to get that frag dead to right. Sapphic doubles down on the opening. He might even be able to find a third. Well, it's okay. Effectively, a third kill comes through in exchange for his life. So that's a 4v2. Eyeballers are doing it again. And uh, I mean... They keep getting themselves into these positions on map points. They just can't close them out. When will they finish off the job? Now listen, the way TSM have been able to stabilize, even though it's 2v4, I'm not willing to count them out just yet. Uh, is it, oh, you know what? Inters isn't alive anymore, though, and he's been like the big clutch multi-fragger, so maybe. Maybe this is an eyeballers round. We'll give it a moment. Eyeballers still have a little bit of time to play with here. And I like that they're not being too crazy about it, right? We said in the previous rounds, looked a little bit unhinged. So now not trying to make those same mistakes again. And instead, going to tighten up. And make their way over towards this A bomb site now. Siphon has an inkling. Looking to see if there is going to be a lurk, because there have been so many previously. Drown for Siphon to oh, step up, out. and there we go. I was waiting for that to happen. The lineup, surely not a third. Eventually, he's put to death, but further damage is inflicted to Flusher. That nades on the mark. Boom. Touchdown, but no, not the kill. How's that not found? Rag. Valdez been robbed. Let's get VAR on the case. <laughs> Bro, Siphon getting two there is just. It's just dumb, is what that is. Oh, crazy. And this is what I was saying. 2v4, I'm still not counting them out. But unfortunately. Couldn't do too much more than that. Series, well, I keep reading the word series and I need to stop doing that. Map point once again for eyeballers. But you know what else it is? It's also the precipice of another OT. And we uh, could I very easily be going there. Yeah, I mean, history has repeated itself a number of times and history says we go to OT. There have been five map points to date so far for eyeballers. Four on the T side, one on the CT side. None of them closed out, obviously, as we're still here on Mirage right now. Will we be here after this round is the question. Or can Eyeballers finally get across the line? They've gotten themselves in towards middle. Oh, JW is a dead man. And that's their highest fragger taken down. Siphon didn't have to do much. Just steps on a timing and gets a free kill. That's devastating for eyeballers, because again, this was their round to lose, and JW being such an aggressive AWPA may have cost them. Loses that opening duel. He'll hand over one more opener to Zyphon. He oh, loses that as well. Zyphon with a second. You know what? I find that when you when you when you when you point out a player, they tend to step up a little bit. Yeah, now Sapek will eventually get that kill. But how much more can get done? Down to three versus three. Bombsite relatively open. A good molly to deny some space. But Moto will take out one with the AWP. So with only two players left here. Oh, that ramp is not adequately cleared. A shot through the smoke. But Pepsil's the last one left alive. He does get the bomb planted. But he's got two players zoning in on him. The AWP is on high. He gets the first. Oh! He cannot get the second. What a run and gun with the pistol from Moto. It's not even the orb to get the job done. But there it is, folks. Third OT. We go again. You could just see Pepsol's brain processing the information as it was all playing out in front of him, right? And uh, he actually navigates the situation very nicely with the way he moves around and the fights that he takes and the fights he forces. But it's in vain. 36 rounds played so far here on Mirage. And they don't mean a whole, mu a whole lot. Because, well, we still haven't really been able to split these two teams an hour and 20 minutes later. And funny enough, it's actually identical on the opposite stream. Uh, Rebels and your favorite team, who only Sam knows how to pronounce, <laughs> uh, have leveled up the scoreline. Go ahead, Sam. Tell them the team. Uh, Brazilewski lose. There we go. Brazilewski lose against Rebels also in OT3. So, here we go. <laughs> so, what you're saying is it didn't matter what game we chose. We would have been in oh, for yeah. a banger. Exactly that. <laughs> We're Love in for the marathon. This ain't a sprint. Glad to know that the Polish derby is delivering. But over on this side, Zyphon has lost yet another opener. Always involved in them, but uh, not always the one to come out on top of it. And Eyeball is now given them numbers advantage yet again. But Joel, the hero that he has been, even things out once more. Labored spray. He's not quite connecting and he will lose his life. What is the bomb doing there, bro? 
It's a good question. And Pepsol <laughs> is going to recover the C4 and try to join up with JW, who's taken up a lot of ground in towards market. Pepsol is going to activate that C4, and TSM are going to have to make a retake happen. You can see they're just like, please, God, can you guys come A? We, we don't want to have to retake B. And in the back of their minds, they know that's what's going to happen. Confirmation comes through. Bomb gets activated. And now they have to retake. Is this going to happen again? Our eyeball is going to win the first round of OT. Again, they've done that every time, Sam. They can't win a map point, but they sure can win the first round of OT. <laughs> well, I don't know. TSM, three players still left alive. JW, man, he's just so clean. When he holds an angle and doesn't act like an aggressive overachiever, uh, he gets a hell of a lot done. And there you go. He'll also get the last kill of the round just to top it off. They do, in fact, win another first round of OT. Oh my, okay, well, that is the streak continuing. And you got to start to wonder at that point, why can't they finish off the game? You know, it feels like they just get into a, a bit of a mental rut. Maybe just overthink the situation. Either way, noses in front once again here on Mirage. Nice timeout to come through from TSM. I said a little bit earlier on, but their timeouts have been very impactful. I wonder if this is where they turn it around. We're so early on in this round of OT. That's a double AWP for our CT side. Yeah, we haven't seen that once, I don't think, right? No, we saw the... rarity in CS2. Yeah, yeah, we see it a little bit on uh, Anubis from time to time, but even that's kind of fallen off a little bit, yeah. You don't see that nearly as often, but it is such a, a heavy investment. So, team's not really willing to, to risk it for the most part. But you're in OT, so why the hell not? We'll see if it can pay off here. Joel's been handed one. We'll see what he can do with a rifle. Looking forward to see what he can do with the, the AWP. You, you said he kind of, I think you were saying, he kind of like yeah. used to ping pong between them. So, having him here as a secondary AWP could be pretty impactful. Yeah, there was a time in the early stages or at the beginning of his career when he was orping, playing for uh, Galaxy Racer, I think. Um, and then from there, more transitioned in towards the rifle. So he certainly is competent with the gun. See what he's going to do with it here in this round. Eyeballers have been afforded quite a lot of space in towards middle and into that second orb. They go. Joel's been tagged down, though. And I'm betting he would love to have a rifle right now. And he's going to get swung on. Ah! But nope, job's still done with the orb anyway. Good God. The fact that he's able to escape with his life is ridiculous. Ridiculous, but Xyphon will get taken out in return. And now TSM fully aware. Oh, sorry, not TSM. Eyeball is fully aware that there are two orps at play. One in mid, one over towards A. And yes, that means that they're going to start heading over towards this B site. However, the orp is quick to follow. This is going to be the easiest site, I think, to overrun if they can deny the sight lines. But it's going to have to be quick and it's going to have to be decisive. Yeah, time ticking away. They don't have that luxury on their side anymore. Fresh and Sandy is going to keep them at bay. JW gets ticked down. Wouldn't have been heard by the CTs, though. Two players hard committed to either bomb site, and it's a massive exit coming through right now. Baldur's going to get forced out of position, but he's still actually able to get a kill. Good work coming through from him. He's hoping he can set up his teammate with the AWP. There's Joel, down to four points of health. Can he deny the planter? Someone has to get on the plant. Someone's got to activate the bomb. They're still looking for nope. the kill. There's no time, guys. Doesn't matter if you get the kill or not. You still need to plant the bomb, and they've dropped the ball entirely. Bro, what is happening? And this is, again, it's that same thing. So Tom Pickering and one of the other guys that I cast with from time to time, we, we call it that let's get it done syndrome, where you get so close to the finish line and you start making all of these mistakes. Really small things that cost you so heavily. And I think for both of these two teams, more so for eyeballers, because more often than not, it's eyeballers who get so close to that threshold, and it's TSM who have to claw back into it. It's so seldom TSM that find themselves on that kind of edge of the line, can just drag themselves over situation. And then eyeballers go in and make this crazy mistake, and TSM, cool, we're still in this, and they keep fighting back. And now they'll kick off this round with the first opener here. But pepsor has gone completely unchecked. He's not going to get too much done, though, however. TSM very quick to hold the line, and eventually he will get dealt with. Two players left for eyeballers, stuck in mid. Okay, JW will get one return. We take those. But how much more can they realistically get done in this round? Yeah, I feel like we've reached breaking point for eyeballers. You know, they've had, what, six map points so far here. A couple on the T side, a couple on the CT side. They haven't been able to close any of them out. 
and eventually you're going to run out of chances. And TSM, it feels like they're slowly getting better and better now, getting more and more comfortable. And they're going to have a lead going into their T side. They're two rounds away. If you're not familiar, the magic number is 22. That will get you the win here on Mirage. And we will flip sides here once again. I, I don't know. I've just got a feeling that this is TSM's... I mean, eyeballers have to win three all three rounds here if they're going to win this map in this set of overtime. Has to be a flawless CT side from them. I just feel like that's too much to ask. Now, I could be wrong. Yes. But I think this is the first time TSM have the lead in OT. Okay. I could be wrong. I think so as well. I feel like, I feel like you're onto something there. I do... I have been known to be incorrect, I'll be honest, but... Uh... It's okay. It happens <laughs> to the best of us. And that, that is an interesting change of pace here, and we'll see if they can capitalize off that. JW with an uncharacteristic miss. And they've also bought into the double AWP here, and it's not even going to be the AWP that gets the results. Okay, it'll be Moto's AWP. That'll uh, even out the... Uh... No, more than even it out. Down to three versus three, and it's... Oh, man, it's the two orbs that are still alive. How much can you get done with two orbs? It's all oh, down no. to Flusher, the sub, the stand-in, the man, the myth, the legend. And he has to clutch they... this out for his team. Uh, they essentially had three players on the A bomb site, and still Joel's able to come out of Palace completely unchecked. He's up to 40 frags right now. My goodness, what a game coming through from Joel. And it's going to be a 1v2 for Flusher. He said the man, the myth, the beast, the legend. This is where the quote went down. It wasn't necessarily Flusher. Of course, it was called Zira. Vince, the <laughs> one who coined that term. But he's in the same part of the map right now. So maybe he can channel that energy. Oh, man. So many angles to have to check. No, swings wide. That shot was never going to connect. Well done to TSM to play that patient. And I, I, you know what? I had an inkling. If I am indeed correct that that's the first time TSM have taken the lead in OT, this could be it. Map okay, so I did go back TSM. and run the numbers. And in the okay. first half of first OT, they had the lead briefly. Ah, so if we're going to get very technical... But they started technical, on CT that time. Exactly. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll chalk it down to that. It's been a long time since they've had the lead. They've got two map points. TSM have two opportunities to close out Mirage. And I feel like that would be such a huge blow to eyeballers, right? Like just such a... Uh, defeating blow, considering that they were the ones who have had so many chances. JW, not able to open up. That incendiary actually bounces awkwardly. It was a smoke grenade, excuse me. So, all's well and ends well, but Motto's opened up. Motto always opens up. It, it's getting a little <laughs> bit ridiculous how much this man can get done with an AWP in the first few seconds of a round, but it's already brought down back to four versus four. TSM have control of the site. This is massive. Eyeballers, you know, I don't love the look. It's taken so long to get into position. It's never going to activate in time. Now he's just going to have to turn around because they've lost yet another player. They're just wasting down their own time. This is how they mount this retake. Yeah, first player spotted. The swing comes through, but not going to get too much done off the back of it. Sapek must have spotted the one towards main. Knows there's one up in towards Palace. New player who's somewhat unknown as Joel holding, creeping in this corner. Flasher has no idea. Spots the Palace player. If Joel peeks, there you go. That's going to shut him down. Quick, sharp, and Pepsor, last player left alive. Everything to do can't be done. And TSM wow. will finally close it out here at 20. Three. Three overtimes it took. We almost went to another. But TSM will come and maintain that control at the last hurdle. Yeah, that's crazy that finally TSM are able to get across the line and break the backs of...